Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Start, sir. Okay, so uh, I I am not able to see the participants, so that is not possible, na? No, sir. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, very good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Professor J. Maithi from IIT Khadapur, and uh, I am really happy to interact with you today for the class uh, for the subject design and analysis of experiments and i'm sure you are enjoying the subject and the class all the lectures so as i have mentioned in the class that mostly the materials uh, we have taken from a book written by dc montgomery design and analysis of experiments the book title so that is a very very good book and most of the um, topics are covered from that book so you will if you have the book with you and with the lecture i am sure that you 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 will be you will not be facing much of the problems but nonetheless the issue is that a, the subject requires some background uh, or other way i can say some kind of prerequisites particularly from the statistics knowledge point of view because if you have seen the or when you have gone through the lectures you have seen that there are a lot of statistical concepts used and as well as uh, many statistical models we have uh, used in explaining or and analyzing uh, the data experimental data so i will just go through first that some of the questions what you have asked the first question what i am seeing here how center point and block design is useful in design of experiments okay so these two are entirely different concept so let me give you answer to the first one that block design so if you recall to the process model where we have discussed about the response variable y is affected by many controllable factors in terms of x that we denoted them in terms of x and many uncontrollable factors we denoted them in terms of z now that the z is basically the uh, reason when we are talking about blocking that mean the uncontrollable factor so you will find out there are many uncontrollable factors which uh, may not be controlled but can be blocked so if 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 the effect can be blocked during experiment then what will happen uh, you you will get the treatment effect more precisely and that is what is the reason and second is that when the block effect is uh, effect is also computed in this manner so you know that how much problem you are going to have unless you control during experiment the block effect means the nuisance effect it may so happen that you may not be able to block every nuisance factors some are uncontrollable unknown so in that case you cannot do but some are uh, uncontrollable as well as Uh, known in the sense that uh, blocking is possible so you may be thinking of that what is the blocking or what is block here if you consider uh, any manufacturing scenario where uh, you will find out every manufacture manufacturing product is uh, part of basically the input is the raw material and uh, if you think of the the process is controlled by operators or the machine is controlled by operators so ultimately suppose you have 
uh, five, uh, some number of operators and they you require them to use. But the operator to operator, there is, there is difference in terms of skill, competency, commitment and many, many things. So now if you want to see that uh, you neglect this particular the effect of the operators, so ultimately, maybe in, in, in different shapes for the same amount of raw material and same process settings and other things, there, there, there may be some kind of uh, differences in the quality of the response variable. Or raw material, when you are talking about, if you, if you suppose you are using coal, you are using coal as raw material. Now that coal from of which grade? It is a high grade coal or medium grade coal, or it is something, and low grade coal. So that also effect is there. So this kind of uh, effects, uh, if you cannot control, and but you want to see that how my temperature of the process or the pressure or the flow of the uh, flow of the process, those things are affecting. Then unless you control them, you will not get the correct result. So that is the region of blocking. Now center point, center point is basically, now very uh, simple way, you just think of a two factor experiment where temperature and pressure are two factors. Suppose the two labels are there also, you consider the temperature at high and low, uh, low and pressure also high and low. So then what will happen? So if you, you will get a rectangle kind of things, now you, you join the diagonal, so there you will find you, the intersection point is the center point. If you have seen already the way we have uh, we have mathematically treated the two-factor ex experiment or uh, more than two-factor k-factor experiment, where each of the factors are two levels. So then you have seen that for mathematical simplification, we have considered low minus one and high plus one then what will be the middle point that will be zero because minus one plus one in between zero. So this is a point where we are considering the uh, in, in the transform do, uh, that uh, domain mathematically when you are transforming the data to minus one to plus one. In that case, this is the this is the point of no influence of the factors. Okay, so in 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 reality, in practice, what is this point? This point is the average point basically basically suppose you just think of you may be working pressure maybe from 1 to 2 mpa let it be but the average is 1.5 and again temperature may be suppose 1000 to 1200 degree then average will be in between is basically around 1100 degree centigrade and as far as the requirement is considered you want to maintain that so then when you deviate from that point what, what are the effects are happening that is of primary importance. So in that case, this 1100 degree centigrade as well as 1.5 MPA, that is the center point of the average point. This is, this is useful because the, from mathematically you have seen that this is the zero influence point and practically you have seen that this is the point where you want to, uh, want to have your, uh, that process most of the time run. So, okay, there are many other reasons, uh, factors maybe that we know, but the, for, the, for the very simple case, I'm basically explaining like this. So uh, then the data, whatever you, you get, and that the center point, you will find out more number of observations or runs you do to get the average effect. When you, when you write a regression equation, you write y equal to beta zero plus beta one x one, something like this, that be and if you write in terms of uh, when you estimate this that that beta zero the intercept part also that is something some kind of constant one if no effect is there suppose no factor is affecting then still beta zero is there so uh, that center point basically talks about something what is that kind of things okay so uh, this is one kind of uh, interpretation another kind of interpretation is or uh, use basically will be when you go for higher order uh, model means if your response surface is not 
linear, it may be it's a it's a non-linear case. Then what will happen? That that the center point and the factorial point, the values will be different, and ultimately the curvature effect will be will be found out. And uh, if it is if it is uh, that that linear complete linear one, so, uh, then you may not require the center point also you have seen earlier. So CCD is the design, central composite design when you use. Uh, for any other explanation, uh, any other things we, in this particular respect, please go through the book where the central composite design is discussed. If something more is there, you will be finding out. Now, second one is that in balance, incomplete block design, what is the meaning of lambda? I mean, we know uh, we know the actual, we know formula, but what is actual statistical meaning of lambda? And I want to know in what type of industry DOE is used and how can I approach? Okay, that means that there are many questions together. One is basically the lambda part. So I think so far I can recall that basically lambda in the balanced income uh, balanced uh, that incomplete design this lambda uh, that was used just basically when there is what is balance in uh, what is incomplete means for example suppose if i have four types of uh, that four batches of raw materials and i require to conduct some amount suppose five number of experiments and I am not able to do five number of experiments per batch. Suppose four I will be able to do, though then there will be some incompleteness from the blocking point of view. So then, then what will happen that how many, which kind of, uh, you have five settings. Now, if the five uh, levels are there for one factor case. So five settings are there. So now, uh, where when it is not possible, which of the setting you want to you don't want to consider for which of the uh, which of the blocks or the raw material, batches of raw material, uh, for example. So in that case, what will happen that the number of experimental run per treatment may vary. So you want to make it uh, balanced means number of treatment per batch uh, that uh, in the entire experiment number of treatment. Uh, will be equal. So it is some kind of mathematical uh, that formulation only that lambda and uh, the situation under which that uh, um, that treatment combination as well as the in, in, the, in the block combination considering that number of experiment per blocks and number of experiment per treatment that will be taken care of. So and you are saying that uh, uh, I want to know uh, in color what is the meaning of that. Is, that is basically that that lambda value will give you basically uh, that particular balanced situations. Basically, that is the meaning. Of it. That is what uh, per se I, I I could understand. Then second one is that I want to know in what type of industry DOE is used. DOE is, can be used everywhere. It is not only the industry, even in the service, uh, not only that uh, your manufacturing industry, not only the process, but in the service industry, everywhere it can be used, provided, provided the relationship y equal to each function of x, that's the relationship DJ required in order to understand the relationship and in order to get the effects precisely from the design point of view, it is required. So uh, you can, it can be used in the car manufacturing, in fact, in, in, in uh, automobile industry, I, I have seen that they are using a DOE. Suppose in the chemical process industry, there are a lot of DOE applications that they are. So what I mean to say, DOE is a generic tool and it's a generic concept. Now, what way you want to use it, that is, that all depends on the requirement on the purpose, but otherwise it is applicable. When I have multiple factors, 
large number of factors affecting the response, then you cannot do DOE at that level. So you have to have some scheme in, 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 in screening out many factors and then coming to some useful factors which are other way basically, uh, basically influencing the response very much. So then when, when the influence of a factor on the quality of the product, for, for example, is very important, then you have to design the product and uh, the process as well as the product in such a manner that, uh, that, that the influence of that factor is carefully taken. Carefully taken. So do you, then you require a offline, not the online during production, you require in the laboratory or in the manufacturing site also some kind of experiment you have to conduct. That kind of, this is basically we are talking about offline. So that is the issue. You, you, you don't require to do DOE for all trivial cases. All vital cases, when the, when the relationship, knowing the relationship is extremely vital, change a deviation, change in one variable, little has huge importance in terms of the uh, ultimate aim, the prop, uh, I can say the cost of production point of view, then definitely we require to. So you have to understand that what is it a critical system or not? The process, if it is critical, criticality from production point of view, from quality point of view, from safety point of view, many ways. So that is you have to decide. Otherwise, it's a general generic one applied to everyone. So I the DOE, you know, how can I approach to that industries as I am current pursuing my graduation BSc? Okay. No, in that manner, you cannot take as you are BSc, as a BSc in statistics. So that means as you are in BSc in statistics, you don't have this, uh, the traditional experiment, what we are talking about, laboratory-based experiment, what the engineering student uh, does. So what you require to do, you do some kind of computational experiments. So when you develop some kind of algorithm, there also you do some kind of experiment. So if you develop the algorithm using the DOE concept, so perhaps you, you, will, you will find out that you may uh, get a lot of benefits. First of all, some of the, in, in some of the cases, when you develop algorithm, you require to run the, run the computer for two, three days, maybe altogether. So it's a, it's a wastage of time in some sense, but the DOE concept may help you like particularly the fractional uh, factorial design kind of things, or later on you will be knowing the Taguchi design, so those will be able to help you. Third one is in what way this course will help automobile industry, sir. This is this is extremely helpful to automobile industry. You think of a car manufacturing. Suppose you think of uh, that engine manufacturing. So development of the when you are designing the engine, so it's a very very important component of any car. So there are many factors they are contributing. And then if, suppose you use Six Sigma concept and then you do like define, measure, analyze, then when it is the improvement comes into consideration, you will find out that the, for improvement, you will find out there are there is Pareto law. What is the Pareto law? Only vital few will contribute uh, in most of the time, and it's to an 80 20 rule. So, when you, you, you are you have found out that vital factors, then DOE will be useful. And that, that experiment will help in precisely understanding the factor effect, the interaction effect, curvature effect, so many things, whether you are, and also the optimization, whether you are basically optimizing your process from the production point of view or not, or the or optimized design is uh, done or not. So that sense. Is it possible to get lecture notes uh, or PPT slides? See, this is NPTEL authority. Basically, they have this, they will know. I cannot answer here. How will we choose the best design for our experiment when we choose CCD and BBD? These both the things I think I have given you some answer to this. 
So BVD basically, it is basically from the blocking point of view. And CCD, you can, you, it is basically, you may not require to block that time. CCD and BVD are two different design concept. Both can be jointly used also. That means there can be some blocking as well as uh, that central com composite design. Central composite design, if you go, uh, go through my lectures, you will find out when you require extra FX to be identified, particularly when the things are, uh, things are basically not in the linear, and, uh, means in the factorial points are not able to give you the correct estimates uh, from the uh, parameter testing or estimate, uh, testing, hypothesis testing point of view. For example, suppose you have four, uh, two factor to two level, four settings. Now you have done one replication. So you have only four observations at. So uh, if it, this is the case, then you cannot estimate the error. Okay, so because that now if you have central uh, point at this, uh, at the, uh, add central point with this experiment, so you will be and, and do the experiment there uh, several times. So you will be having more data and then your estimation process will uh, become easier. You can find out the error and other estimate. Suppose uh, when you uh, go for that uh, quadratic regression, that time you will be seeing that CCD is used uh, that um, not only the central point, the axial points are also used. So it all depends on what kind of problem you are dealing, what kind of relationship basically that Y and X are having. So they, then you have to choose. And blocking, as I told you, this is related to nuisance or noise. Okay, so you have, if you do not control these, ultimately your design may be not uh, imperfect and, and when in actual use, the noise effect will be the uncontrolled factor effect will be there. So you will face problem because the performance of the product, what you have developed that will be deteriorated because you are designing for everyone. You are developing product for everyone. So that issue you have to see. And in, in fact, there is one concept called robust design. So you, that if you, this is additional advanced one. So in robust design, you will find out that how the uh, that you know, inner and outer array concept Taguchi robust design is there. So this is not discussed in the class and topic is not not there. So but you can go through Taguchi inner and outer array for robust design and then blocking the uh, uncontrollable effects. Okay. So then, uh, sir, I was unable to submit all the assignment, but I want to give the written examination. Can I go for it? Again, this is administrative question. So I don't know exactly. You ask to administrate uh, NPTEL office, they will help you. Okay. So, okay. Then another one, but I have some more questions that already we have got from the forum, how to optimize one factor at three level, we can check the hypothesis, but how to optimize? Now, optimization issue, we have not discussed in this, that factorial experiment, what we are saying, except response surface methodology. Okay, so if response surface methodology is completed, then you will understand the concept of uh, optimization, how it is used. But what you are saying, one factor at three levels. So here, actually, what you are doing basically, you are you want to know where to suppose because if the factor can be at three different levels, and if you run uh, your process at level one or level two or level three, then from the basic objectives point of view, I mean, what you want, uh, where you should want to run this. From that sense, you can say what is the best level, best setting or best level that you can find out. But that is not the optimum one that I can, you cannot tell at this level. 
For example, suppose I my uh, my uh, response variable is yield. A chemical process yield is the uh, response variable. You want maximum yield. So if you run, suppose temperature is the factor, and suppose it has three levels. Okay, depending on the what process, what is the temperature. No, but okay, but three levels. And if you run at low level, you may find out the yield is sixty percent. But if you run at high level, suppose it be seventy percent or seventy five percent. Obviously, you will go for uh, higher level. Considering all other factors, their effects are oil control, and uh, then it is then that is the best part. That is the best. I can say the settings. Okay. Then your we can check the hypothesis, but how to optimize? In the hypothesis testing here, what you are basically doing that if the different labels have effect, then you have to choose one which one is giving you the best result. But if there is the, the label that the factor is not affecting, means when you change from one level to another level. The effect is effect is insignificant. Uh, the response, uh, what you are observing, these are almost similar. Then, uh, then at any level, any value, you can set this particular particular variable or the particular parameter. So that is uh, that is another advantage if there is no effect. If there is no effect, no problem. It is not control uh, controlling means the change is not affecting the response. So at any level you can do, it will help you in cost point of view. Suppose if the temperature is high, this will be more costlier than low. For example, if we th if the situation is like this, so then you will fix it low level and, and consider other factors, how they are affecting and run the process. But if there is effect, then hypothesis testing, what it will say? Yes, there is effect. Means if I change from one level to another, response values are going to change. So in that case, depending on the purpose, if it is higher the better or lower the better or nominally the best, what kind of um, quality variable or response variable it is, you have to choose accordingly. Is uh, or how DOE is different from regression except interaction effect what else DOE at? No, no, no. There is no relation with DOE and regression per se. DOE, if I consider design of experiment, then I am talking about in the in DOE, there are two. I, I understand that you are talking about experiments and analysis. So it is, it is there is it is not that DOE and regression are comparable. DOE parts design of ex, DOE. If I say design and analysis of experiment, it is the subject. Perhaps you are interested to ask the question that experiment and regression. If this is the case, in, in DOE, you have seen that there are two distinct parts. One is in order to understand the relationship Y is function of X, so you require data. Where from data will come? Data will come through experiment. What type of experiment you want to do? What will be the design for the experiment? Those things are coming under experimental designs. One experimental design is set and the required number of experimental runs are conducted, then you have data. Now you want to know the relationship. In order to build the relationship, you have to have a model. When you have data, and y equal to function of x or function of xz, this kind of model you want to develop, then regression is one of the techniques. And it is it is basically mostly used techniques, linear, non-linear, so all these things it can capture. So don't, don't misunderstand by technique and the design. Technique, you are using regression. Someone say, I will not use regression. I will simply, uh, see the data and uh, from the uh, some other way I can do, I can find out the relation. You can still do that. Okay. But regression is the, is probably the best way to understand the relationship. That's why you are doing regression. So 
regression is a technique used in design analysis of experiments. In analysis of experimental data, regression is used. Students are saying thank you for the answer that is being provided. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Now come to the come to uh, uh, the few more questions are asked. One question is, and in calculating the area area one minus alpha, why lower limit value is taken as one minus alpha by two, whereas in case of mean estimation, this question is not clear. But what I can guess, basically, perhaps you are talking about sometimes we have taken alpha and sometimes we have taken alpha by two. In case it, it all depends on whether it is one sided. I put the test or two sided test. One sided and two sided meaning is very simple. Otherwise, statistically, we say one tailed and two tailed. One sided means if your acceptance region is one, uh, rejection region is at the one side only. For example, suppose I want to say that the pollution uh, level should be. Uh, minimum so minimum value let it be 0 0.005. What I am saying that my pollution level for any part any particular matters or anything that let it, let it be 0 0 0.005 or less, then it is one tilt. Left side is the uh, is the acceptance, and right side will be the rejection. Similarly, if you talk about Talk about suppose the percentage of marks in the experiment uh, in your examination. It will be the higher side. So okay, the higher the better. Suppose someone may say, no, no, I want to have something uh, a target value means if you deviate. Suppose the for example, you just think of a concept called hardness. Okay, suppose hardness suppose a hundred brns. That is the target because at that hardness level, my product will be a uh, product uh, function properly, then below 100, above 100, uh, both will not be acceptable. So when your situation is higher the better or lower the kind of things, your rejection region will be one-sided. So in that case, you, you will use alpha or one minus alpha because you are going for one tail test. When your rejection region is in the both sides, like your nominal is the best or target is the best kind of things. So that means if it deviates from the target, either left or right, so and, and it is far away from this, then that is not acceptable. So then you are using two tail test. So you have to understand from the requirement point of view, whether the you demand one tailed or two tail, tail test, or whether your region of acceptance uh, region of rejection is yeah, one-sided or two-sided or both-sided. That you have to see. In case of one-sided, alpha instead of both two-tailed or two-sided, it will be alpha by two. How to calculate beta zero, beta one? If it is from the regression point of view, already formulas are given there. Okay, so you have to use that formula, x transpose x inverse, x transpose y, that will give you the beta value in the I'm telling in terms of uh, matrix uh, computation. Uh, if you are considering the single uh, simple regression, then beta zero, beta one, there are algebraic formula also. That formula you use, that is this is not a big problem for anybody. It should not be a big problem. After coding subtraction by 70, what is logic here? Which portion? Mm. I think so big. Can you uh, have any, any 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 explanation here? He is talking about okay. after coding subtraction by minus seventy. Sir, actually, for the mathematical uh, less computation, we usually subtract the value from some okay. from some. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, okay. So that means this is basically from the computation of the variance point of view. A standard deviation or mean point of view that you are saying or it is computation of regression coefficient point of view uh, first one sir okay okay actually then 70 is a constant so if you subtract a constant value from all the observations and after that if you compute the deviation there will be no there will be no difference 
but if i have larger values numerical values and then uh, and if you subtract a suitable quantity from that your that uh, the values what you will be handling they, they will be they will be maybe two digit or one digit kind of thing so it will, it will it will help you in reducing the computational time sense but in today's uh, uh, computing uh, high speed computing era you don't require to do this but when you are doing manually this will help you that is nothing so the what is the message message is when you are finding out the deviation like variance if you subtract all the observation by a constant value and then the subtracted that values you use for computing the variance part whatever value you get that will not be different if you do not subtract because when you subtract a constant and then take the deviation uh, deviated value and like you are what you are doing in variant cal calculation object value minus mean so instead of minus mean you are also doing minus 70 another one Okay, so that way it is not a problem. Please explain calculation of error and total. So it is it is related to ANOVA. Uh, so I request you to go through again because if this is already already given that how the error and total is computed. Okay, so what is what do we mean by error? They are in fact tutorial was also there related to this. In third column, why k, k equal to 4 for not instead of k equal to 3? Okay, so fine. So this, uh, this few answer this all in the forum itself will be posted by TA because these are very specific to a particular problem or particular question what is asked to you. So I am going for mostly that conceptual clarity here. So SS interaction calculation is not clear from where values of the such that these are coming. Please explain the meaning and about values of SST, SSE and SS treatment. Okay. How to evaluate good or bad. See, actually, if you see the analysis of variance that uh, computation, Actually, the fundamentally what have, what is done there, it is a concept called partitioning concept. So the observed value, observed value, every observed value is partitioned into into the, the uh, few parts. One is the grand mean, then the individual level uh, factor level mean minus grand mean, and then the rest is basically coming under error. So you are basically making a balance and then when you are squaring the, this thing, make, uh, keeping the average grand mean part at the left hand side. And then when you are summing this and finally you are basically getting the sum square total means and as well as sum square error and as well as sum square treatment. The sum square total means that basically what is the total variability in the data, in the original experimental data. Okay, so how much is, uh, suppose if, the, if there is no influence of the factors considered, then what will happen ultimately, more ideal case all the time, you will be getting the same value and on average value you will get. But if there are, if there are effects, so then depending on the treatment conditions that effect will be will be uh, introduced in the response what you observe and as a result the value will be value will be different from observed yeah, from average value from the average i am talking about if there is no effect all will be along one one, one value one line like grand mean line only if the factor has effect then only there will be difference so those difference when you are taking so many in capital N number of observations together, what is the aggregated measure? That is SST. How much variability is there in the data? 
then what is ss treatment how much variability of sst is explained by the factors you have considered remaining variability is going to errors means the that ssc talks about the amount of variability in sst which is not able to explain by the treatment or the factors you have considered so that is the meaning basically again i am repeating the experimental data or ideally all experimental result will be same with reference to the y value if we create a situation when the factors consider no effect and all other extraneous factors are properly controlled all value will be same but as there are some other external factor which you not you are not able to capture so you are basically considering taking the average so the average value at a particular setting that will be almost same if the effect is there the mean average is those things will be different from the grand average and that average values from individual observation when you are subtracting the grand average and then creating one major of deviation which is basically variance kind of thing that is uh, that is how some square total all error deviations are squared and total and this sst you want to explain with the help of the factors the factors contribution will go to ssr ss treatment and the 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 remaining part means sst minus ssr will go to the errors which is beyond your control what are the minimum number of replication required again this huge in general uh, uh, five is recommended but again that replication number of replication it's a, it's a, again a design issue depending on the situation it may be maybe three applications will work sometimes five sometimes even more depending on the on on the that noise or uh, noise inspectors depending on the variability that is uh, there in the in the each of the variables or the each of the factors as well as in the responses so there are issues like uh, that how to determine the optimum number of replications so that also there are there are formulas that can be used but for this doe part what i have seen that mostly people are considering around 5 how will we choose the most suitable design for optimization experiment ccd and bbd so is most suitable design for optimization experiment again i am seeing that you are basically getting confused with ccd and bbd so as a <coughs> and you if you if response surface methodology is being taught fine otherwise you wait for that what are the key skills required for design engineer first of all domain knowledge so if you are a automobile engineer that automobile engineering that is very important if you are a chemical uh, you want to design a reactor uh, chemical reactor chemical engineering is very important so you must have the engineering knowledge for which you are going to design that is the first then second basically what happened you require many tools and techniques like doe is one of the such tools and techniques you have to you must know that from domain knowledge you know what you want to do what are the factors that is going to affect how they will affects and then if you have statistics knowledge then you are in a position uh, to understand data meaningfully analyze data get better better insights from data and then doe is a te technique which is required because for which kind of experiment you want to do under which situation uh, and that the lot of designs we have we have already mentioned and you just see that which one is giving you the best possible result considering the considering the your quality of the product point of view considering the cost considering again the feasibility and other aspects need not be that you have to go for dvd if the crd is be sufficient for some small uh, uh, reason if you do blocking you may make it complicated without much improvement 
Similarly, you may not require to go for second order or higher order regression pro analysis. You may re require only a first order analysis. So those things, unless you don't know, do not have the knowledge of the design techniques, knowledge of the statistical, on that statistical techniques, you will not be able to do. So Nutshell, I want to tell you for a design engineer, engineering of that particular product is the extremely important part. And second, when you go for design of experiment, planning for experiment is another next most important part. Then come to the experiment, then come to the analysis. Okay, so in this sequence, analysis is probably the uh, obviously uh, coming much later. If you do not do uh, able to do analysis, fine, no problem, somebody else will do for you. But if you do not have the domain knowledge, some analysis will be done, some results will come, you will not be able to explain, then you are, you, it is not good. And as a result, DOE is not used by one person only. It will be a teamwork where the engineering expert, statistics, design, uh, uh, your analytics experts, so, so many people will be there together. So mostly I, because at 350, I have to com uh, complete it. So similarly, there are few questions like, uh, is there any difference between uh, courses, industry support and course, which uh, industry support something that is not clear to me. Then two factor ANOVA and two OA ANOVA, whether this question was asked, whether it is the same or not. Yes, two factor at different level and two OA, it is, it is the same thing. Then uh, another question was asked that we discuss an experiment in which we were talking to controllable factors, reaction time and temperature, and we have four settings which we choose randomly. I want to ask, this is a fixed effect model or random effect model. Yes, when your, your levels are known, and, and, and accordingly, you are finding out the settings for experiment. This is basically fixed effect model. Is robust design, in robust design, why we are taking change in y equal to zero? Okay. So basically robust design, the primary objective is that you design the product in such a manner, it will work under noisy environment, different noisy environment. So if I know that what are the noises or nuisances and while designing the product, if I take care of these by exploiting the relationship of this noise as well as the controllable factors. So that means when in the user case also the control, the control what you are what you are providing that will help the users to nullify the effect of noise and the product will be used. So that is the reason why basically we say that the deviation should be zero. Not y equal to zero, it is basically delta y equal to zero. Okay, so these are the few questions. So some of the question very specific to a particular problem. So that we, so we will so we'll give in the forum. Uh, but otherwise this is the end. Thank you so much for listening to lecture to my uh, all the explanation. I tried to, I hope that to some extent it is clear. Okay, then uh, is it in a new study curriculum in the medical college, how best it can be compared to the previous teaching method with the UI model? Oh, great. Uh, is it necessary to conduct universe, univariate experiment to select the range? Okay, and if if a new study curriculum is introduced, as any anyway, same question probably. So that medical college and other this issues, forget uh, you just think of your own experiment where you are basically working on. One question I found that is it necessary to conduct univariate experiment to select the range of variables between doing any DOE methods? It is other way around. It is basically you are not doing DOE. Uh, for the sake of basically, if you require that to know that at what or which level your your response will be the better one or the best one. 
So that's why you are basically doing the experiment. Suppose you have one factor, but multiple levels. You are not sure which, uh, which are the labels giving will give you better result. So that's purpose you are doing. And DOE is a standard, very systematic scientific procedure. Otherwise you will do some kind of ad hoc procedure, take one label at a time and do some experiment, another label at a time do some experiment, but that will give you inferior results. Okay, thank you so much. I think uh, Saurav, is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay then. Okay. So, so have a nice day. Thank you. So I'm leaving Saurav from this. Okay, sir. Okay. So, you can leave